Alright, so this is kind of a quick video to show how to start up SysWeld and to run a spot weld analysis. So here we are in the 2016.5 version. Now if you change versions, you need to go to Tools, Solver Settings, and see how this says 2016.5. If you update this to the newer versions, you're going to need to change the solver location. Also in here in, uh, let's see, should be job options or something like that. Maybe job launcher. Let's take a look. You can set this up for different processors. <clears throat> now it depends on how what your license is set up for, but I believe I can do at least eight on this uh, system. So I'm going to change that. All right. So we go along the top, and if we go to welding, <clears throat> we go to spot weld mesh. And we just set our working directory. Okay, this working directory is fine. Number of sheets. Here's your sheet thickness in millimeters. You can use either a predefined geometry for your electrode, where you specify these values as they're defined over here in this panel, or you can set a custom mesh. I'm going to use a custom mesh, and I'm going to do this F3 electrode. Okay, we'll create a mesh. Okay, and there it is. And again, that's my F3. These lines that you see on the top and bottom surfaces and around the electrodes, those are lines that uh, define surfaces. There is a, a heat transfer surface here, so this is where the cooling water would be at. This is an axis symmetric mesh, so there's the line of symmetry right here. You have your top sheet and your bottom sheet that are specified in here. Okay, so now we're done with the creating mesh. We're going to close this up. We're going to go to welding, spot weld mesh. Oops. We're going to go to Welding Spot Weld Advisor, rather. We're going to put in a name. I'm just going to put in here Test 4. You can set a working directory. That uh, one is fine. Put in a description if we'd like. Now that uh, we have this filled out, you see this next one is a different color. We're going to click on that. That means it's ready. Here's our material databases. We can do a custom uh, or user or whatever. Um, here is our material. We're going to change it to a DP600. And we need to click on collectors. We need to select our collectors for the sheets. We can do both of them if they're the same material, or we can specify different materials for different sheets, but then we're going to hit OK. Now that they're selected, we need to press this button to add that information, and then they'll show up right there. Now that we've done that, we can go on to the next panel. Here's our spot welding frequency. In Europe, they use 50 hertz electricity. In the United States, uh, we use 60 hertz. I'm going to change that to 60. Here's the squeezing force in newtons, 1,500 newtons. We're just going to leave that for this example. Here's the number of squeezing periods. So I'm going to just leave this as 24. Here's the electrical loads. You can have more than one electrical load. And this is the period per load. Now, let me uh, bring a notepad up over, over here. And so, what they mean by a, uh, they use period. People in the spot welding community usually use the word cycles. In one cycle, equal to one over your frequency. over 60 and that's how many seconds that would be so that would be different if you're looking at uh, 50 or 60 Hertz frequencies but that's uh, 1 over 60 is 0 0.167 0 0.167 seconds 
per cycle. So that's 167 milliseconds. Sorry, that's 16.7 milliseconds. All right, so we have a total squeezing period of 24 cycles. That would be 400 milliseconds. And we're going to put a load on here. For um, let's say 15 periods, the intensity of 6.8 kiloamps. We can plot that if we want. Now we have this filled out. Uh, I'm going to cut this back a little bit to save a little bit of runtime. I'm going to make this uh, 20. And so what that'll do is we'll have five cycles of post weld squeeze. Alright, here's our function database, contact resistance functions. We can go either weak or strong. Strong coupling is a little more computationally expensive, but perhaps more realistic. And uh, we're going to check this for strong mechanical coupling. We're going to generate our input data. Okay, it saved it. Let's take a look and see if I can find that uh, find that data. Can we call the name of this one test4? So this is test4.spw. Let's open that up. And inside this file is all the information that uh, we have. So this part about the electrode isn't used. Here's the process parameters. 15 cycles of electrical load, one electrical load. 60 hertz, 20 periods uh, or cycles of load, and then uh, here's some other information. Here's our 6.8 kiloamp. Here's our Poisson uh, coefficient. Here's our density. It's a ferrous alloy, uh, melting temperatures, and so forth. Electrode Poisson coefficient and uh, here's our water temperature. Okay, so this is in degrees Celsius. So the water temperature is 25. If we need to change that, we can. And uh, that would be that right there. Okay. So now that we're we're done, we're going to go and hit solve. Now we're done generating the input. We're going to hit solve. keeps wanting me to contact the license server so I need to keep putting that information in All right, and it really doesn't do a whole lot my uh, antivirus doesn't particularly like that but uh, in order to see if this is running we need to take a look at our task manager All right, so this is the task that I'm looking for, sysdis.exe. Okay, when we see that, that means that uh, it's doing its job. The other way that you can check to see what's going on is if you go into your data folder, you'll see these TMP files. All right, so the job will be done when those TMP files, those Fortran temporary files, are gone. Uh, that's when you know your job is completed. Once the job is completed, this plot button will be accessible and you can plot the these values right here. You can also bring your data files into Visual Viewer and, and in that case you'll be able to take a look at um, phases and uh, temperatures, stresses, strains, and, and all that kind of information. Alright, so that's just a quick look at uh, sysweld for spot welding.